You know, when there's something inside of you that grates, when I call you baby, you may be succumbing to Gnosticism. We had these thoughts. I'm throwing this, some things out here today. A little tongue-in-cheek with that first statement. What grates you and what don't grate you doesn't need any theological rectal exam. But, I do want to... Uh, draw out and define what Gnosticism is because uh, it's such a buzzword, such an alarm, there's so many red flags going off, especially in the glory movement and the finished, finished works circles about Gnosticism, watching out for Gnosticism and got to watch out because uh, the red flags and the alarm might steal your buzz baby, so please don't let that happen. There's a lot of people that are going forward uh, with a form of whack, with a whole lot of intoxication, that are sounding to me like they're actually ascribing to Gnosticism and not to finished work. So I'm not sure exactly what they're drinking, but I do want to talk about what propels your mind into realms where you succumb to just a little twisting of the truth, just a little muddying of the waters, just a little mixture in your wine. Drink some wisdom, babies. Drink some wisdom. Wisdom has prepared her feast. She has killed her beasts. She has mingled her wine. There's no impurity in this. So, so drink heartily. Drink drink a belly full from wisdom today. Crack your Bibles open and have a line right up the nostril. Crack your Bibles open and do some glug, glug, glugging off of this wine vat of wisdom in Proverbs chapter 9, babies. It's good stuff. It's pure. Become inebriated on this and then hearken into my words, <laughs> as wisdom says. Because what Gnosticism is, is a divergence. It's ascribing to duality. It is denying the Father and the Son. It is uh, not reconciling the fact that all things are reconciled. Because God was in Christ reconciling all things unto himself. And if, if there's anything in you that in your mind, in your imaginations, in your theology, in your dogma, in your reasonings, if these things... Uh, remain unreconciled the things that God has reconciled I mean that falls right into the lap of uh, his rebuke God's rebuke to the apostle Peter when he told the apostle Peter when the gospel the good news was being ext extended to these Gentile dogs because the Jews called Gentiles dogs Gentile dogs he says don't call unclean what I have made clean so what Gentile dog what woof and whack you got inside of you? You got a woof and whack inside of you that you haven't reconciled yet. And I want to challenge you to own your woof and whack because you've got desire. And you're human. All the gamut of your humanity has been swallowed up in Jesus Christ. And in as much as there is something that is a schism in your mind, you know what drives people to... Gnosticism to the separation to the God being out there to I'll be holy someday and down here in the flash on this earth that, that things aren't getting it yet and I'm still struggling and, and I'm dirty and you know, when you've got that schism that duality in your mind you know what's propelling you to that place to embrace false the false doctrine of Gnosticism it's shame and God gives glory for shame he gives the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness he gives beauty for ashes so what is this woof and whack inside of you? Don't call unclean what God's made clean anymore. You got a woof and whack inside of you. You need to howl. Ow! Let it out! God's reconciled himself to all of this. And what you deem is unclean, what you deem is a desire, irreconcilable. You don't know what you're desiring. You just stigmatize yourself and listen to the accuser for a little bit, hiding under condemnation. Like Adam hiding in the garden behind his fig leaf. 
God wants you to come out. Song of Solomon's coming to me suddenly, where it says, Who are you behind this cloth of the rock? Why are you hiding your face? Come out from behind that thing. I want to see you. Babies, come on. Come on out from come out from behind the cloth of that rock. I want to see you in all your fullness. Not that you be naked, not that you be exposed, not that you be subject to shame, but that you be further clothed. God doesn't want us to be exposed into nakedness and vulnerability. Although intimacy with him is a state of absolute stark vulnerability, he's calling you to a place of utter vulnerability, to utter clothing, to be clothed with him, to be clothed with the most abundant of comeliness. I mean, even these parts that the Apostle Paul talks about that lack honor, talking about the anatomy of the human body. And there's parts in the human body that lack honor. But he says, even unto these, what has God done? He's clothed it with the most abundant of comeliness. So trust in Papa. Trust in the covering of Christ. Be clothed. Be further clothed. Come up from behind your shame and be clothed with the glory that you're destined for. I see it. Papa sees it. You've got glory. You've got beauty. Each and every one of you, you've got treasures inside of you. And you've been deceived and deluded by this Gnostic lie that it's out there in the by the by, like pie in the sky someday. No, it's now. You're beautiful. Mwah. Receive it in Jesus' name. Come up from behind the deception. Come up from behind the fig leaf. Loose. 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 You're wolf and whack. <laughs>